Welcome back. We got lots of things going on in the shop today. We got a Nova hood that we got to weld a hood scoop on. Fix the lawnmower for my daughter. We got a broken pressure washer pump. I think the bearing's out in the pump because it'll run for a second, get hot, and lock up. I think it's under the bottom on the pump. But the main reason that we're here today is I was watching a bunch of my favorite YouTube channels. I was watching No Nonsense Know How, uh, South Main Auto, um, what was the other? I was watching Watch West, Work, all those guys. The one common theme is that they're all working on Fords. And we're not going to be any different. This is our Ford F250 2015 Super Duty. Now, anybody that's ever owned one of these 250 and 350 Fords has had a common thing with the um, death wobble, the vibration in the front end. And this truck is no different. You get around between 45 and 55 mile an hour. If you turn or hit a bump or anything, the vibration in the front end will just about jerk the steering wheel out of hand. I'm not joking, it'll vibrate like you wouldn't believe. Had to turn it off. There's, of course, there's bikes coming through. It's the weekend. But anybody that's ever owned one of these Fords knows that right out of the box, they will have that vibration. Now, this truck, we have changed universal joints. We've changed the tires, uh, rebalanced the wheels. We have put uh, all kinds of different things on the truck to try to get away from that that vibration. But it, it stays there. It's, it's been there ever since I've owned the truck. Um, it does have a stabilizer shock on it that I've never replaced, but even back when the truck was fairly new, it, it still would do that. So I'm going to try a different approach. Well, this is what I've come up with is what I hope to be a solution. I've got some parts from Detroit Axle and from Rough Country. And having some experience with some off-road vehicles and some lifted trucks in the past, we would get into that vibration problem with the bigger wheels because it'd be, of course, the center on the wheels would be offset. And when you put bigger components on a truck and change the geometry of it, it could be hard on the suspension. So you upgrade to heavier, beefier suspension, suspension components. But that's not really the problem with this F-250 because it's not a lifted truck. It doesn't have oversized offset wheels on it, but still, that's something that we may be able to address by using those heavier duty. It does have a heavy duty suspension. They are slightly beefier, just like you'd build an off-road truck. So why not apply some off-road technology to try to take care of the problem? Let's open this up and see what we got. Let's see what we've got here. One of the things we got is these rod end links with these greasable fittings on them. So we can apply these rod end links. They're a little bit beefier. They're from Detroit Axle. And then we got some Detroit Axle, they're heavier shock absorbers, and they're supposed to be like from zero to two inch lifted trucks. Now these are supposed to be like an exact replacement, but we just have to get them out of there and see if they match up. And this uh, Rough Country stuff is packaged pretty nice. I like these little things they put in here. And this is a, this is a pretty simple, comprehensive kit right here. What this is, is Instead of having the factory stabilizer, this kit converts it to a dual stabilizer front steering. So you take your factory, I guess you take the factory one off and you use this device here. This is what it all pivots off from. Let me get this out here. Here's the Rough Country kit unboxed. And this is kind of what it looks like. It comes with all these pieces. I'm a little disappointed. Now, I've used Rough Country in the past. I'm a little disappointed that this says made in China on it. Now this is not an expensive kit, but it wasn't cheap either. And the fact that this has got Chinese made shocks, when I'm sure these Detroit axle replacement shocks are probably Chinese made too. But uh, for rough country, you'd, you'd expect for it to be US made stuff. Um, I guess we probably could have went with the Rancho. The Rancho was a hundred more bucks for the similar style kit. But it does come with this big bracket that goes on the center differential. It goes, okay, it goes like this. These bolts over here goes through the differential cover and then it's got a U-bolt that goes around the axle here. And 
it doesn't seem like it's made too awful bad. And plus it's got two more of these, these, I guess they're plasma cut or laser cut brackets. They go on each end to hold the shock absorber. Of course, it's got a little rough country cutout that goes on there. And then the hardware. And there's your end pieces for your rods. Of course, there's some wipers that would, that goes on the truck, but that wouldn't, that's not gonna help the suspension any. But it does come with some decals that were wadded all up in the box. And I guess they go on the shocks. So we'll put them on after they're installed. That way we know where they're facing frontwards. But uh, they try to make sure that china faces towards the back. We don't want that pointing right out in the open. Even if nobody ever looks at it, it's just embarrassing. Let's get one of these Detroit axles out and look at it. That's not bad, but it does say on the box. Made in China, of course. Detroit axle, every now and then, you'll get parts. If you order a Detroit axle kit, you'll get some parts that's made in the United States. I wouldn't have expected that from Rough Country to be China made, but I don't know. Whatever. I think that goes on this. Let me put that back in the box and keep it separate, I guess. I don't want to get the hardware mixed up. But I'll get the truck pulled in here and get some stuff moved around, and we'll see what it's going to take to put this together. We've got these factory forward steering right end links off for the torsion bar, for the uh, stabilizer bar, I guess. And uh, they don't feel awful. They're kind of stiff. That one's, that one's won't move at all. But this one's real floppy. The only thing keeping it from moving, I don't think it moves up and down. But these ain't gonna have much to do with the steering anyway, but if they're wore out, they are. That was, all tore up but these new ones that we got are the right length but they've got grease fittings on them and i want to have to hold it on there i guess to get it they don't they come dry they didn't appear to have any grease in them that i can tell so i'm gonna grease them up before we put them back on the truck these is all greased up they're not really any longer i thought they were going to be slightly longer they might be maybe a sixteenth of an inch longer or something. But uh, these factory ones, they, they look like they've never been changed. And the rubber boots are all dry rotted and cracked. And it's probably just time to upgrade them. They were hard to get off because uh, you're supposed to put a little socket or wrench on this then use like a ratchet wrench on the nut. But we could not uh, get it to work that way because they were kind of dirty. So try to put some vice grips on here and then run it off of the impact. That seemed to work the best. Kind of destroyed this one, but this other one came off without much fuss at all. But they're factory. I, looking at the stabilizer shock under there, it appears to be a factory part too. So uh, this stuff's probably never been changed. It's a fleet truck. They probably just changed. If they did change it, they probably used Ford parts. So. I mean, it could be, they could have been replaced at one time, but more than likely they replaced them with Ford stuff because it was a fleet vehicle. And it didn't have a whole lot of miles on it when I got it, but it, it had been well maintained. They, it only started rusting after I got it because, of course, we live in the south, but we get a lot of salt on the roads here. It come from Texas. It didn't have no rust on it at all when it come from Texas. Well, I'm crawling around under here. I got the rod links on here these rod end links and we already greased them before i put them on but i noticed on both sides of the truck this uh this little holes was broke it's hard to see there's a little fit in here a little fit in here and that hose is my vacuum to my four-wheel drive system it was broke loose on both sides i noticed when i put it in four-wheel drive in the cab that i that it doesn't really work but when I lock the hubs in, it will work. So this little little vacuum actuator for the four-wheel drive doesn't seem to be working. So I got some holes here. I don't know if it's the right size, but it's the right length. And this is the little hose that allows it to flex when you're turning and stuff. The fitting was broke on the other side where it goes to the frame here. 
Uh, I'm going to put the camera down a second. It's back on there. If you guys want to see a video of me replacing these universal joints and these the vacuum chamber and stuff in there that operates this four-wheel drive system, I've got a video on the channel. It's not a very good one, but uh, it is does show the details and the tools you have to have to do it. So I've got the rubber hose on there. That should flex like it needs to. The rod end's on there. Now it's time to focus on getting this uh, differential cover loose. Put the light over here. There's the factory. It looks like the factory stabilizer. Now we're, I'm not even going to take it off. I think I'm just going to leave it there. And then we're going to put the one that goes on this crossbar, the dual stabilizer shock on. And you have to take two of the bolts out of that differential cover to mount it on. We'll, we'll show more about that when we get ready to put it on here. Right off the hop, we run into a problem. We're supposed to put this bracket on there. And this side of the bracket goes in the differential. And it's got, there's offer two different size bolts because one's for early model, one's for a later model. Okay, so we found the bolts. If it's the later model, it uses these eight millimeter, these fine thread looking things. If it's the uh, earlier, like 20, see what year it is. For 20, 2005 to 2022. It says use these bolts. These are 5 sixteenths. There's a coarser thread, but it says use the washers that fit it. This is the washers that come with it. And it says they're 5 sixteenths washers, but that has got a, it's got a half inch hole in the center or 5 eighths. Big, that, that washer's not gonna work. So we dug some washers out. It says use flat washers. So we're gonna use these flat washers. So now we're gonna get under there, I guess, and take these two bolts out of the differential cover and then try to bolt this piece on, see what it looks like. I forgot to mention when it's on the differential cover, this side is around the rear end and it takes uh, this big U-bolt and the bolts that came with it, that's the only ones that fitted out of all this pile of bolts down here. The bolts that came with it, I know they're lock washers, but they are really hard to thread. Uh, they're hard to even get started, but they're the only fine thread locking nuts that was in the box. So maybe they're supposed to be that way, but they're going to be hard to get on.
okay, we've got mounted on here. We've got our outside bracket mounted. And it actually, when we tightened it up, it tilted itself up in there. It's supposed to be dead level, but there's a flat spot on that tie rod end that keeps making it bow forward. And we've got the center bolts on. We put our little bracket on. And it's really quite easy. You, you go to the end of the tie rod and at, you go outside of the adjusting collar and mount your bracket on with the U-bolts. Then put your upright bolt in. It goes on top. And then you got two more bolts over here. They go on top of the bracket. And then you're outside. It goes outside the tie rod in. I mean the adjusting sleeve. And that one went on there really nice and stayed nice and flat. But this one, every time I tightened it back up, it would pull up in the air a little bit. I'm afraid, well, those two steering shafts turn together, so they're not going to be a problem. Um, Matt? Would you get inside the truck and start it and uh, turn these wheels back and forth for me? Matt, start up. I'm, I'm really worried about it right there because it looks like it's going to rub. Right there, there's very little clearance between that cross link and, and that mounting bracket. It's so close. But it's not hitting. That'll do. That's good. That's worked out just fine. Um, all the, I mean, the hardware was okay. It was a little different sizes than what it said. And it seems to be, I mean, I haven't drove it, but it seems to be working pretty good. So that's our version of the installation. I haven't put the shocks on yet, but uh, I'm not, I'm a, I don't believe that the shocks will be that big of a deal. We'll come back and look at it here in a minute. We'll see how hard it is to get the shocks off. Well, it was pretty easy to get that shock on there. It's kind of hard to get off, but went on there pretty easily and it fit back in this is made for zero to two inch lift so it fit really good so now that we've got that on we're just going to cut the wheels the other direction and put the other shock on all right the last of the shock absorbers is on it was pretty easy they got a little tab in there on the back that holds the main bolt on there and then you tighten these down until they get a little squishy and that should be all of the install, two front shocks, cross stabilizers, and uh, the rod end links. We're gonna give it a try with the new stabilizers and regular shocks and rod end links and see what it does, big bump. So far we're up to 40, not getting any vibrations yet. We start going over these bumps around these curves when we usually feel it in the steering wheel. It feels, it feels heavy. I guess it's where it's got those dual shocks and I didn't take the factory one off. It feels kind of heavy. But I hope it doesn't affect the power steering. I don't think it will. They're not really trying to stop the thing from steering. They're just dampening it a little. It feels pretty good at 50 miles an hour. Matt put his hand, or shutting the camera on my hands here. It's staying pretty sturdy, not no vibration. I still hear something in the tire making a vibrating sound. But that's these, it's these old, the nature of these old, I guess they're winter weather tires or wherever they are. 
My seatbelt is rubbing the microphone. I hope it's not affecting it. Feels pretty good. I can still feel something. But now everything over the front end has been replaced. So I can't think of anything that would uh, would cause it to have a vibration now. We need to get out on the open road. Go ahead and shut that off for just a minute. We're going 60 miles an hour in a straight line. And I can still feel that vibration like there's a tar completely out of balance. I don't feel it in my steering wheel. But I definitely feel a, a vibration. I can feel it in my seat, under my seat. Like there's a, it, how it feels when you got a drive shaft out of balance. So we're gonna have to dig a little deeper. We've got the shimmy out of the front end. It, it's so tight that wherever I turn it, point it, it stays. It, it doesn't try to follow the road anymore. So that's pretty good. I'm liking the way that it's feeling. Okay. We're on perfectly smooth, brand new asphalt, and we've still got a vibration. And this is a brand new road, so we shouldn't have no shaking, but I can still feel it in the seat of my pants. I don't feel it in the steering wheel, but something is not right. I believe that I'd had these new wheels put on, these tires, and I believe when they put the tires on, instead of putting wheel weights on, they threw those little bags of BBs in there, those supposed to be self-balancing weights. And I'm going to confirm that whenever I get back home. We're going to look and see if there's any wheel weights on the wheels. And if not, I'm taking it back to the wheel shop, and they're going to vacuum all these little BBs out of here, and they're going to put me some weights on. I'm not settling for that. Those never work. No matter what anybody tells you, you can argue with me all day long. I win. They don't work. Well, shoot. Didn't really make any difference. Still got a vibration. I don't know what the next move is. The wheels do have wheel weights on them, so I'm gonna take them back to the tire shop and have them rotate and balance my tires. I do have a bent rim in the back, but they do have weights on it, so it must be balanced. But I got grease all over everything. Uh, we're gonna change the wiper blades out. It has nothing to do with the steering, but I guess that's all we're gonna do on the truck tonight. Matt's gonna get under there and check the differential oil, make sure it's got oil in it, and we're gonna look at our U-joints again, so. I guess that's it. it. I can't feel any vibration in the steering wheel, but it's definitely got a vibration somewhere. I can feel it in the seat. Maybe I'm paranoid and losing my mind. I don't know. Those dual dampers on the steering definitely make it feel heavier. It steers a lot heavier, but I'll get used to it, I guess. I'm kind of disappointed. Anybody got any ideas or suggestions? Let me know. If, do these all do that? Apparently they do. So feels good in the steering, but it's still got a vibration somewhere. Well, thank everybody for watching and following along. Stay clean, everybody.